users are put off of Apex Medina because of the flashy modern interface when they use it for the first time. Fact is, Medina may be more like SketchIt than you may think. Let's take a look at how to use Apex Medina from the point of view of somebody moving over from SketchIt. We'll start out by launching appraisal and opening up a blank appraisal report. The only thing you need to have done in the report before you begin sketching is the establishment of your report file number in the upper right corner. Just as with SketchIt, changing this field after you've completed your sketch will break the link between the sketch file and the report. Once you're done making any needed modifications to the file number, go to the Tools menu and select Apex to launch the program. Always launch Apex from the Tools menu if your sketch will be used in Appraise It. The first thing we'll go over is the layout of the program. Apex uses the ribbon bar interface for its menus. It's basically a different toolbar for each menu item. This is the same interface you may have already encountered in Office 2007 and 2010 and in various places in Windows 7. While we're here, let's change a key setting that makes drawing in Apex more like SketchIt. By default, you must hit Enter twice to lock in a line in Apex. This is so you have a chance to move around the measurement marker after drawing a line. To change this to a one inner lock in, go to the Tools menu, select Configuration, go to the Dimensions tab, and switch from Manual to Automatic. Then, to save this setting, click OK. The area where you'll be spending most of your time will be in the tray on the right side of the screen. This tray can have four different functions and you can switch between them by using the buttons at the bottom. These functions include the Command Pad, the Text Library, the Symbol Library, and the Fill Pattern Library. We'll go over these more in depth later. We're going to start out drawing in the Command Pad and click on Define Area. Here, for our first floor, we'll select Gross Living Area, Level 1, Positive Calculations, Auto Posting of the Area and Square Footage Labels, First Floor for the Area Name, and we'll have the color set to Medina Blue. And if we wish to have these settings come up each time, we'll check Save Default. We'll begin drawing in the upper left corner and draw in a clockwise fashion so that the measurement markers are placed on the outside of the area. Our first wall will be the back wall of the house. I'll type out 5-0 on the keyboard and press the right arrow button to draw a 50-foot wall to the right. Enter will lock the line in. Next, a 30-foot wall down. Enter to lock it in. 10 feet to the left. Enter. And now we're ready to draw the bay window on the front side of the house. To do this, we'll do a rise and run since it's the most common way to measure an angled wall in the field. I'll start out by going 5 feet to the left, but without hitting enter to lock in the line, I'll go down 5 feet. This gives me a 45 degree angle wall measuring a little over 7 feet. Enter locks it in. The front of the bay window will be 10 feet to the left. Now to complete the bay window, all I have to do is press the B key as in Bravo on my keyboard. This is the bay window close hotkey and will draw a mirror image of the wall that I used to open the bay window. We'll continue on 20 feet to the left and then press the A key as in Alpha to auto-close the sketch. Hitting Enter will place my area labels in their default positions in the center. After the area is closed, there are a number of shortcuts that can be used to adjust the scale and placement of the sketch. First, use the C key as in Charlie on your keyboard to center the sketch on the page. You can also use the M key as in Michael to move the sketch around the page. And finally, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to easily adjust the scale down or up. Next, I'm going to add a second area to the sketch in the form of an attached garage. First, I need to define my area, this time as garage carport. This go around, I'm also going to change the color of the lines to green. I want to begin drawing this area at the upper left corner of the house. The best way to get your cursor exactly on the junction point of these two lines is to move your cursor into the general area of the point and then press the J key as in Juliet on your keyboard. This will jump the cursor to the exact point where these two lines meet. The first wall will be the back wall of the garage so we'll go 30 feet to the left and enter locks it in, then 35 feet down, enter, then 30 feet to the right, enter, and finally the A key to auto close the area. You'll notice that I drew this area in a counterclockwise fashion. 
Doing this puts the measurement markers on the inside of the area rather than the outside. If you need to move any label around, simply click on it to select it, click again to pick it up, move it, and then click a final time to drop it. If you wish to delete a label, simply click on it to highlight it, and then press the delete key on your keyboard. Now we're ready to draw some interior walls. For this we'll use the free form button. There's no need to define a new area since interior walls will not appreciably affect the square footage of the house. I'm going to draw a 10 by 15 foot room in the upper left corner of the house and I'll start in the same spot that I did for the garage by using the J key to jump to the junction point. I need to measure out 15 feet along the back wall so before I drop my pen by pressing enter I'm going to type in 15 and then hit the right arrow key. Now I'm ready to begin drawing so I press enter to drop my pen and I draw 10 feet down, enter to lock the line in, then 15 feet to the left. Enter locks the line in and hitting enter a second time picks up my pen. Now I'm ready to label our room as a bedroom. To do this I go down to the T button on the bottom of the tray and select bedroom from the list by double clicking. Then I place the label in the room. I also want to add a door so I click on the S button at the bottom of the tray and select doors from the category pull down. A 45 degree angle door should do so I select the door by double clicking and move it to where I wish to place it. To rotate the icon press the R as in Romeo button on your keyboard as many times as needed. With doors you'll want to place the icon just slightly over the wall so that it barely overlaps to give the illusion that there's a gap in the wall. Now, if this were a ranch style house, we'd be done and ready to transfer our sketch over to appraise it. Instead, I want to add a second floor to the sketch. Now, I could do this like I would have in SketchUp by resizing and moving the first floor to the top of the page, but in Apex, I also have the option of adding a second page. To do this, click on the green right arrow button in the lower right corner, and when asked if you wish to add a second page, click Yes. Now on the second page, I can draw the second floor just as I did the first, except this time, obviously, I select Level 2. When done, you can see that I can flip back and forth between the two pages of the sketch by using the green arrows. Now that I'm done with the sketch, it's ready to be transferred to appraise it. To do this, all I need to do is close out of Apex. It'll ask me if I wish to save my sketch. I say yes, and then appraise it will flash for a moment while the data is transferred. Now that the sketch has been transferred, I can look at it from within Appraise It by going to the main sketch page, and then by checking out the second sketch page from the contents menu. You'll also see that the square footage calculator has been filled out. For technical support or any additional assistance in using Apex, you can contact them directly at 800-858-9958. And as always, if you need assistance from us, you can call us at 800-644-4051. Thanks for watching.